And hello, everybody. It's another Tuesday. Landing right here, greeting you again on a fine Tuesday evening, as always. It's How Table Talk time, week six. It's been six weeks already. Ain't that crazy? Over here to my right, we have Mr. Pastor KD. Pastor, how you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's, it's good, to, good be, to be with you. I'm your right-hand man, huh? Well, actually, ironically enough, you really are this time. Normally, you're in front of me, but we can <laughs> say that, and it makes sense now. <laughs> And then over here to my left, a reoccurring guest straight out of last week, Brother Curtis Campbell. How are you today? I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, good. I'm glad you decided to come back. We didn't run him off yet, so that's good. It was close. Yeah, yeah, I could tell. We were on that line there. But, you know, folks, last week we talked about finance, talked about how to take care of your money, how to budget. Well, this week we're not really going to, you know, make it seem like we're telling you how to, how to run your life. Now we're just going to... You know, tell you tell you who you really are. And by that, I mean both of these men here have very extensive knowledge in human psychology. And they know the uh, the personality types. I didn't really know this until I came here, but there's there's actually set in stone personality types. And, and you know, they're going to sound weird, some, some hard-to-pronounce words, but bear with us. Brother Curtis, I understand you actually used to teach on that kind of thing. Um, what's your background in understanding the personality types and all that? Well, it is not really teaching. We have here what we call next step and big step. Uh, after someone comes becomes a member, we like for them to go to next step and big step. And in big step, we give them the personality test and find out what their personality type is. Absolutely. I actually had to do that for pre-employment before I worked here. I learned a few things about myself I didn't even know were there. So there you go, folks. Um, so I, so for this week, instead of, you know, our normal structure of me uh, throwing the questions, this time I'm just going to sit back just like y'all at home, and I'm going to get educated. So everybody strap in. I'm not sure where this car is going, but it's in drive. So let's go ahead and start with the first one on the list. What can you tell us about the Sanguines? First of all, how many are there? Well, first of all, there's four personalities, and everybody has a primary and a secondary. And uh, you have a sprinkle, if you will, of maybe uh, the uh, third and fourth part. But usually there's a primary and a secondary. So you have four. One's cleric. The other one's sanguine. The third is melancholy. And the fourth is phlegmatic. Now, not necessarily in order, but those are the four personalities. And everyone has at least a primary and a secondary. When I had taken the personality test, um, I'm cleric melancholy. And we can explain the difference of those. And then, you know, I have a touch of sanguine in me. Uh, very little phlegmatic. And um, I just want to say before we even start, uh, going very fastly is there is no wrong or right personality for the individual but the placement of these personalities in a business in a church in a body is very important so and even when you marry it is so very important to know the personality of the individual because everybody's got their best foot forward so there's no wrong 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 right personality but the placement of individuals in your life is very very huge and um, i'll just lead with a story is that over 30 years ago uh before me uh, before i learned about personalities it, my wife and i had gotten married and the short version is I was in the Navy, so I took her across seas to Australia. And uh, she and I would always talk and cut up and have a good time prior to taking her halfway around the world. Well, I had taken her to Australia, and after the honeymoon's over, that's who you really are. You know, your best foot forward is always when you're dating and during the honeymoon. So Annette had gotten very quiet. And I'm thinking, oh, God, mm. she may have not wanted to marry me. Mm. I mean, can you imagine the greatest blessing in her life? Mm. <laughs> was exactly. Me. At that time, she didn't live too good of a life. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, so she's over there. She's very quiet. So I call her mother, and I said, what's wrong with Annette? And she said, what are you talking about? I said, well, Annette just quit talking to me. She, she isn't, she's not as talkative as she once was. 
And her mama said, oh, that's the way Ned is. We have driven all the way from Oakdale to Alexander and back, and she may say one or two words. Well, I didn't understand that because she had always talked, uh, not a lot, but she was more, more talkative before that. So after I learned uh, about personalities, I, I learned that Annette wasn't being mean to me or ugly or mad or disrespectful or, you know, pouting. Not that women pout, no. but pouting. Mm. Uh, that's just who she was. So my personality is let's talk. And somebody's got to listen. So that was Annette. And Annette doesn't talk as much as I do. And so that's one of the first things that just really come to the forefront once I learned personalities is that it never was personal. And it's not. Brother Curtis? Yeah. Once again, I want to thank you for inviting me back, I think. <laughs> but I just have one problem. What's that? Last week, I sat on that side. And you sit on this side. Yeah. And do you know what that does to the perfect melancholy? Yeah, it, <laughs> it drives it, us crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that is so very true, is that uh, structure is so important to a melancholy. But I'll let Brother Curtis, since you led into that, I'll let Brother Curtis, if he will. I, we're going we're gonna to do a reversal here, Landon. Uh, You're the right. host, so we're going to describe you. Oh, boy. Uh, the best we know of who you are. You didn't know we were going to do this, so usually you're interviewing us, but we're going to share some thoughts with you that we we understand a sanguine is or is to be or makes up a sanguine. Brother Curtis, won't you be nice because sanguine words are very important to you. We can build you up or tear you down with words. Did you know that? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I kind of had that thought to kicking around. You know, the whoever said uh, sticks and stones break my bones, names will never hurt me. Well, uh, it's not entirely true all the time. Okay, words can bruise, folks. <laughs> they can bruise. Well, look, I love this idea, and I say, let's do it. I want to okay. get analyzed. But first, <laughs> let's just uh, pop through the four, just so people kind of know. You don't have to explain in depth, but... Uh, like you were talking about the melancholies, exactly uh, what are just well, like no, the no, main. Hang on, hang on now, see? Hey, this is good, see? I'm a cleric. So clerics are leaders. And we just described what the format was going to be. And we were going to talk about you. We were going to talk about what a sanguine is. So this is good. So you can <laughs> understand it. No, this is really good. So, so see, a cleric is, is going to always be the driver. He's going to always or she's going to always be the leader. And it's just natural for a cleric. You don't have to work at it. So I can seem as if I'm disruptive, mean, ugly, uh, controlling, and all of those other things. But it is just in our nature. If we're in a group, is the cleric is going to want to take the lead. And it's usually the strongest leader or the strongest cleric is going to take the lead. And John Maxwell said it like this is that leading leaders is like herding cats. I mean, they, we just we go all, all different directions. So let's come back to you. All right, back let's on me. <laughs> oh, boy. All so right. I'll share some good things so that you don't get nervous here. First of all, sanguines are very good with words. You can overpower someone with your verbiage. And uh, you are well, you can articulate well. You communicate very clearly. Um, you are very fun to be around. If if you want to have a party, if you want to have a good time in the Lord, in the Lord, in the yep. Lord, in the Lord, then what you do is you want some sanguines, because someone like you, you're going to be exciting, you're going to be fun, and someone like me who has a little sanguines excited, but we're going to want to we're going to want to drive it a certain way or lead it a certain way. But, but sanguines are, are, are great with verbiage, great with, you know, um, uh, having a good time. And probably some of the, the downfalls of a sanguine is that we can hurt you with words. Like if I said, okay, look, here's what we're doing. Get over and do that. Well, that doesn't just fit right with you. You, you know, you would rather me say, hey, we're going to have a good time, and here's how we're going to do it. You know, that makes perfect sense, actually, because I was complaining about this the other day. I have a good friend that I uh, do high school football games with, and I was trying to teach him or, or, or you know, get him to do something for me music-wise, and we were doing this one high school game, and then, 
you know, he was he was asking me to go grab some cables or whatnot. And he just kind of just said it right on the nose. Well, me, of course, being apparently a sanguine, I was just like, <laughs> you know, I mean, you could have threw the word please in there, bud. And he was like, well, I mean, whatever. And I'm like, you know, it don't cost anything to say please. So that's true, folks. That's not just textbook stuff. This is the... This is living proof of that. <laughs> all right. So. And, and, and no one really means to, well, not all the time. Of course, there's somebody, you know, there's sometimes people want to be mean, like get over there and do that. And it calls for different different ways of saying things different different times. But I'll let Brother Curtis elaborate a little bit. So so words are powerful to you. That's one thing. And you're the you're the life of the party. Brother Curtis, what else would you say about the same one? Yeah, well, the same one's tend to make friends easily, have a lot of friends. In fact, I don't know if they still do this, but back when I was in school, they had in the, the yearbooks that came out every year, they would have the person most likely to succeed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And in almost 99.9% .9 of the time, it was a sanguine because hmm. they just had that bubbly personality. They made a lot of friends. It wasn't necessarily true all the time that oh, they no. were most likely to succeed. But they, that was just their personality type that won over a lot of friends. They they hmm. yeah, make a lot of friends. Yeah, and 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 the thing about sanguines too, not being negative, there's always positive negatives. Is that and here it is. It, it's always pie in the sky. It's always great. It's always wonderful. So you need someone who's optimistic around you, because there's so many pessimistic people, like Brother Curtis. <laughs> 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 and what I mean by that is. He's going to see the glass half empty, which you need. Oh, yeah. That's called grounding. Because if you see the glass glass half full all the time, then that's that's just being overconfident and not and not seeing the negatives and the traps. But so a sanguine is the type of person who is always, you know, seeing the positive. But also sanguines can be very disorganized. And they overcompensate with their verbiage. So they're selling you while they're not doing a lot of times. And they're like, oh, and when they get through explaining why they didn't do it, someone like me, a cleric, is not buying it. And someone like Brother Curtis is in a fetal position crying mm. because he's a detailed person. So let's transition off of you and go to Brother Curtis. Brother Curtis is a melancholy. All right. So watch how this is starting to work. So say we all show up somewhere. No one's smarter or better or more spiritual or any of those kind of things. But when we show up somewhere, if we appreciate who God creates to be, I'm going to lead. That doesn't mean I'm all-knowing. I'm, I'm going to be the initiator. And then what's going to happen is Brother Curtis is going to be the completer. Now, I have his personality in me. My secondary is melancholy, so I kind of know what I want and how I want it. But I'm still understanding enough and thank God smart enough to go, Brother Curtis, what are some traps? How do we need to do this? How do we need to complete it? And then you're the type like, yeah, man, we can do this, and you're going to make it fun for all of us. And you're going to be our people person. Yeah. So when you go to a cash, cashier at Walmart and you look and you see someone who, who looks like they you know, just woke up and not just saying Walmart, they look mad. That ain't the kind of cashier you want. Uh, you want someone who's bubbly. You want someone who's outgoing. Well, Brother Curtis is the type. He's the guy behind the scenes. He don't want to be where you want to be, and you don't want to be where he wants to be. You've mm -hmm. got to have some attention. You've got to be, you got to deal with people. You got to be, it's got to be a fun environment. Brother Curtis, stick him off in a closet somewhere and leave him alone. And he's fine. Just tell him what you want done. He don't need no accolades. He does. He loves people now, but he doesn't need people to prop him up. All he needs to know is what you want, and then give him enough of time. Give him a, a, a clear, precise path, and he's going to complete the task. Brother Curtis, why don't you speak more yeah. about you? Well, sometimes my personality types get so task oriented. We don't even realize there's people around. Yeah. I can walk through the, the foyer crowded for people, but I'm so task-oriented that I've got that on my mind. And I may walk through that thing, and, and people might think I'm ignoring them, which I'm really not. It's just I've got that task on my mind to go get done. Yeah. 
So we can sometimes give the appearance of being rude. Yeah, and you know, uh, from from what I'm gathering here, you know, so so me as a saying one apparently, uh, one thing I've learned is, uh, you said we're people persons and all that. Well, I feel like a lot of time we get a little overloaded because we uh, we got so much going on, even though we don't have, it's not like on paper going on as in like there's a bill to pay or there's a switch to turn on or something, but like I got to talk to this person. I haven't texted this person yet. I got to tweet something. I got to share something on Facebook. So that's, you know, we got a lot mentally going on. Yeah. And it's good to have your people, you know, so people like you that are melancholy, I know you're going to be in your office routinely. I know you're not going to go far from your spot. So it's like, okay, I got to go ask Brother Curtis. Well, unlike 90% of the other people, well, let's call them and hope they can answer the phone and they're not somewhere important, you know. Like, oh, he's in the office, you know. And we wish we had that tunnel vision. Right? Yeah, it would make life so much easier sometimes. Yeah, but but understand what you you add so much value saying when people so underappreciate themselves in some ways and overappreciate themselves in others. But, oh, but yeah. you, you're very valuable. And what a saying one would do is, is I would suggest that a saying one needs a list because because what a happen is you, you start on a task and if you meet – just say, you know, you meet, um, you know, Matthew. Yeah. And, and you, hey, Matthew, what's going on? And you might talk to Matthew for 25 or 30 minutes because you just love people. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a strong suit. Matter of fact, Peter was a sanguine in the Bible. So if you want to bring in melancholy people, Peter was, I think, sanguine cleric a little bit because he, he always was the first one to jump out. He was always the one to speak first. So I think he was tossed tossed up between a cleric and a melancholy. But but Brother Curtis and your personality, if you jump up, you're spontaneous. He's methodical. He'll drive you crazy, and you'll drive him crazy if y'all don't understand and appreciate and respect each other's personality. Brother Curtis, why don't you speak to that? Yeah, you don't know how crazy I was going when you were setting up. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. There was furniture moving all over the place. There was uh, lights going on and off, and I mean, this guy just sat in the last back row of the sanctuary looking at the ground like, y'all just tell me when all the chaos is over, okay? Let me know when it's back to normal. So, yeah, I understand that. Yes, sir. So that's why you probably need a melancholy to make that list for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because if I make the list, it's going to change. And, 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 you know, that's the thing I've run into before. I've, I've tried doing the, the to-do list of the day, and but... It's almost like I do need that, that and, and me and other sanguines, we need an outside melancholy person to, to get that, that brick and mortar laid because if we try to do it, it ain't going to be brick and mortar. It's going to be mud. We're going be, to be about an hour in and say, actually, no, I'm going to go ahead and cross these off and I'm going to add these three. Yeah, you know? and, and just to understand, I really think people get offended. It, we forget and appreciate each other. There is no superior personality. Uh, Jesus had all of them in his circle. And, and we'll just transition and keep pecking at these. Different, but phlegmatic is someone who is a servant, and they don't mind it. You know how, like, some people go, well, they always ask me to do stuff. I, I mean, they don't call me till they want me to. A phlegmatic is, is very, very comfortable being out of the spotlight, being able to serve you. Don't bring them in the spotlight because you'll offend them. Don't say, Hey, here, and see, my wife is a phlegmatic, and I'm cleric. And I think that's one of the only reasons why, well, it's the second reason other than the Lord that's kept us married, because if we were both clerics, we're going to be fighting and butting heads and try to go two different directions at the same time. Oh, and, yeah. And it, it's whoever's going to be the strongest. So, But Annette and, and, and Brother Curtis has got some secondary phlegmatic with him. They don't mind helping out. They don't want to just be disrespected. They, they don't want the mud, and they're not the mats. But they don't mind serving, and, and they don't want to lead anything. Like my wife, she doesn't want to lead anything. Don't say, um, Annette, you're going to be over this. Oh, no, 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 no. You just, you just killed her. She's like, no, I don't want to be leading nothing. Then would you get over here and do that? Oh, I'd love to do that, but don't put me leading anything. Absolutely. Yeah. So they're the servants. Go ahead, Brother Curtis. Uh, a phlegmatic motto is kind of like oh 100 years from now what difference it gonna make yeah they're mm -hmm. real laid back yeah and, and sometimes it's like i tell them when we do the personality tests and one of the uh weaknesses 
it has lazy on there. But it's what I tell them, they're, they're not lazy. They're just so laid back sometimes they give the appearance of being lazy. You know, so they're, they're just laid back. And, and I'll say this is that uh, not being negative again, because I know y'all are watching is, uh, you know, and then we got to talk about the negatives of my personality because I, I, I'm right there with everybody else. But they're procrastinators. Oh, and, yeah. And a procrastinator will drive a cleric like me crazy and a melancholy crazy. Um, and, and so understand the, their weaknesses would be the appearance of being lazy, procrastinators, forgetful. I, I, they need lists too. I, I forgot, and they'll be sincere. Uh, what's some others, brother yeah. Curtis? That yeah, that that's the biggest ones of their weaknesses. And you know, I really find as I'm getting older, yeah, my phlegmatic raises its head more <laughs> sometimes than the, the melancholy, melancholy does because I'm just getting at a point in my life where a hundred years from now, what yeah. difference it gonna make? And, and, it, and you and I, you and I have been together so long that I see that, Landon. I see where Brother Kurtz, when we first started working together, is he'd be in there doing something. I say, hey, when you stop at, let's get over here if you don't mind. Let's get this done. Well, I just I could have walked up and slapped him, <laughs> and he would appreciate that. Boy, he hated me. The if first, he, if he's honest, he hated me when he first met. The me. first year we worked together, <laughs> I was like, if somebody don't choke this guy, I am. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that's that, and this is real time, real honest. I oh, mean, yeah. we're having a good time with it now. But honestly, I told him, I said, you hated me, and I could, t but I didn't know why. See, I was doing what I did naturally without understanding the personalities and he was doing what he did naturally and he probably understood but we hadn't collaborated on them and so my weaknesses let's talk about my weaknesses yeah my, i just say before no, we go into right. that some of that reason was is my melancholy personality when i get up in the morning even if i don't write it down i have in my head what i'm going to do when i'm going to do it and how i'm going to do it the whole day would it's be planned. planned, and then when that cleric comes in and says, okay, let's go do this and let's go do that, it just it, it interrupts my schedule. Mm -hmm. that, that was, that, he's an antichrist, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, 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 and that is true, and not that I'm an antichrist, but well, I interrupt yeah. his schedule. But <laughs> let's clarify that. Because yeah. somebody will say, I heard him say it on stage. <laughs> Listen, but, but, but I think if people could appreciate this in their marriage and work and friendships, and learn the different personalities because their kids have their personalities. Kids have, they the phlegmatic, melancholy, sanguine, or cleric. And it would just help navigate a situation a whole lot differently. So, so but when it comes to me, uh, you know, we can be mean. Um, we change a lot. We have to have change. Now, we uh, people might not believe this, but we don't change just to change. We change because we feel feel like or see something could be done differently and we can't understand why everybody can't just see it uh, so so we can be mean sometimes or, or seemingly mean because of our directiveness because we're very candor you know uh, we're not very capricious when it comes to things um, but there's so many other things um, you know we're bossy that's another negative uh, because it's just in us to say this is what we need to do, and this is where we need to go. And um, if if we're doing this, I want to have a good time, but a good time to me is getting it done, you know, and a good time to you is having a good time. A good time to Brother Curtis is just give me all the details. A good time for the fl phlegmatic is don't put me in front of everybody. Tell me what I need to do. And, and so you read me differently he reads me differently and she re but if we can understand god's gifted us differently not to make us independent but interdependent one upon another then we go well that's just him he's not he's not trying to be ugly or mean that's just who he is say something brother yeah. some of the some of the weakness of the melancholy is one is uh moody yeah our moods can change and swing pretty quickly well, when you think about it, it's almost in your head like you're always at work. You know, you, you always have some kind of task, whether you're physically at work on the clock or not. I mean, like, I feel like somebody that's a really, really heavy melancholy would be like on a Saturday where you don't have nothing to do. Okay, I'm going to get up. I'm going to cook two pieces of sausage and four eggs. 
then I'm going to go check the hog traps, and I'm going to watch football at noon sharp. And so, you know, then if you get like an old college friend or something, be like, hey, I'm in town. It's cool if I come back. Well, I got a, I got a book schedule when really you have the day off. Is, is it, you know, that's kind of what I'm getting there, yeah. just that, that exactly. scheduling. And yeah. if he's going to do two, go ahead, but let me say this. If, if he's going to cook two pieces of bacon, he's not cooking three. <laughs> yeah. No, really, and he's not cooking one. If he don't have two, he's in a fetal position. Yeah. I mean, he, can't, he, he can function, but not with unction. Yeah, yeah another, another one of our weaknesses, the melancholy weaknesses, is revengeful. Hmm. And I tell the people in class when we do the personality test, we're, we're that I don't get mad, I get even people. <laughs> and let me just say this because I want to say something piggybacking. I, I've been with this guy 20 years. You may not like who I am. That's another negative of a cleric because we are very brash and very open. Frank and, is and, what and the Frank, witness yep, says. Frank, Frank. And, and so we're just, you know, that's a chair. Yeah. You know, and, and the thing is, you're going to know who we are and you're going to love us or hate us. That's just, it, it's just, I think that's what it comes down to. And with melancholy, they sneaky. Oh, they, they love him, you know, outwardly, but inwardly, son, I'm telling you, they can be sneaky. And, and we've had these talks. I've heard his feelings. Because, <laughs> look at him. Mm -hmm. I've heard his feelings because I've told him what was up. And he's hurt my feelings because he plays like he don't know what's up. And we both are wrong. But my point is, my point is, and I want to, I want to kind of, like I said, you usually lead us, but there again, we're leading. Change. See, we changed on you, and you didn't yeah, know. Yeah. Now let me just say this: If I had a business, yeah, and the church is a business, but it's not, and you got both sides that want to get it, I don't have time for all that. But we're gonna, we're gonna say, if I had a business, then what I'm gonna do is put all the phlegmatics doing the serving. And when I say serving, that's not a bad word because Jesus no. was a servant and. He said the way up's down. So, you know, that, that's serve it today is a negative, dirty word. But I'd put them doing things. I'd put the melancholy, organized. We're all working now. We're all working. But I have them doing more of the hands-on. Melancholy, I'd have them doing more of the details. I'd make sure that you handle the people. So I want you to have a good time with the people. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead it just like I just did. You do people, you do details, and you do the, the hands-on. And we're all doing hands-on. We're all doing people. We're all doing details. But what I'm saying is don't you go get in his lane because you don't know where you're going, and you sure don't want to handle people because you're going to scare them off. And I'm not going to put you up front doing anything in that, and I'm not going to sit there and have you tell me what to do and you tell me what to do when you don't, and her tell me what to do when y'all don't know what we really need to do. So uh, God's gifted me with the direction, gifted you with the people, gifted him with the details, and gifted them with the doing. And we all need to do each other stuff, but feel comfortable that we're not insecure, or, or what's the word, not insecure, feel comfortable. Self-conscious. Yeah, and uh, meaningless, that what yeah. we're doing is meaningless or menial. Yeah. It, it's, all, it's all big, it's yeah. all big. Because if one kicks out, it, it can destroy the whole project. No doubt. Well, you know, it's just it, it. It really is incredible, though, when when you scripted it out that way. It's, you know, man created machines when the caveman created the wheel up until now. When we have complex machines like like for example, when the fan and a computer goes out, it's it's this little tiny fan that with these small blades. Well, if one of those blades pops off, you're like, oh. <laughs> All the blades are still there. It throws that balance off, and it flies right out. Now the computer's going to overheat because you're missing a fan and, and just the smallest thing. God did the same thing with people. You know, he has the four different types, and when they work in unison, it's a machine. Yes. But if one person leaves, so they're not going to be instant, but that machine's going to fall apart. We are God's machine yep. is, is what it kind of looks like to me. And what you were talking about, uh, uh, we're... Running a little low on time, but not too, too low. I wanted to say that um, with with the clerics, you know, you guys Just sometimes have See? had, yeah, you guys have the biggest target on y'all because when you want to front, when you, but you see, and you want to do that. So people like, let's say what, somebody what? like me that was a sang one that gets in a way kind of like, let's say we need a leader. And I'm like, well, you know what, I'm going to do my best. Well, then people can kind of be like, well, you know, he's just, he's just, but a true cleric is going to be like, 
I'm the leader. Well, then they're going to be like, well, he asked for it. Yeah, you know? well, well th this is good because what you don't understand, it's not I want to be the leader. Now, don't, don't, I'm not being narcissistic. I am the leader because yeah. nobody else in this group can be the leader. But here's what people don't understand about it's not we want to be. It's just we don't know how to be anything but that. Yeah. For me to yeah. for me to do anything else is trying to get in someone else's lane, and it's like a fish on land or a robin bird underneath the water. It, they just don't go together. And mm -hmm. and so it you don't look at it like God's cursed me with this target. You just got to understand who you are and who God created you to be. And every time I tried to let people tell me. You need to let other people lead. You need to let other. I'm not talking about delegation. That's a whole different. You got to delegate, and we. Are, I got all that. But anytime I got out of who God created me to be, and I tried to forfeit that, I'm not happy. I'm not fulfilled, and it doesn't flow the way God intended for it to flow. And then I'm letting people tell me what to do instead of what God created me to do. I didn't choose this. God chose it for me, and so it's just very important. And so we might go a little bit over time here, but this, this right here can help a marriage out. Because if, if Annette and I, if I didn't understand personalities, I could have thought the whole time she was so disappointed. And then watch this, Brother Curtis. This is what takes place, Landon. Okay, we're dating, and you're melancholy. Watch this. And, and I'm cleric and sanguine. I want to be around people. Well, guess what? You love people probably more than me, but you don't want to be around people. No, I want to stay home. You want, so yeah. wait a minute. We were just dating. We had a, we. You didn't tell me all of that. Now, I gotta have people, and you don't have to have people in the sense of, you know what I mean. Being social. Yeah, being social. Yeah. So now you changed. You ain't changed. I just now discovered who you really are, after fifteen years, unfortunately. And you know, from a, from the other side of that coin, depending on how you take that kind of news. That can be more of a compliment than anything because then you learn, like, okay, same situation. I'm dating someone. I'm a sanguine, so I like being around people. I like, you know, it's almost like, you know, to, just to show you, now that I know I'm a sanguine, by the way, I learned that about 30 minutes ago, <laughs> uh, just to show you is there has been times where I'd be having a great day, everything's going, and no one has said a crossword or anything, but if I haven't heard from anyone, if I haven't gotten a text all day, I'm just like, uh, I feel like I'm just like, in this invisible jail cell trapped from the rest of the world. So if I'm dating someone that that just would rather be at home and be be a hermit and all that, but and I find that out after we've gone on dates, the, I'm going to love them even more because now I'm like, I can't believe you were willing to get out of your comfort zone that long just for me, you know? Well, let me just, let me piggyback. I know I'm really speaking a lot more than I usually do in these podcasts and kind of controlling a little bit. Don't mean to, but it's just so valuable is that I can appreciate your sacrifice more is what you're saying to your spouse. Yeah. And so what a sanguine needs to do is back off and chill at home a little bit more. And a melancholy needs to step up and go out more. That's called being selfless. What you have, what you have in relationships today is two ticks and no dog. They're mm -hmm. sucking the blood out of each other because they're selfish. And so if I can learn to go, okay, well, Annette wants to just chill out at home. I'm going to chill out at home and just do what she wants me to do. Uh, you can call me yes man or whatever. That's why I've been married 30 years. Why, right. why you keep calling me yes man? But let me just say this. But she has gravitated to where she wanted to get out more. But, but it, you got to be a student. you got to say, what is it you need, not what I need, and what is it that I need you need to discover. And, Brother Curtis, you might want to say something about that. No, I'd just say that if you, especially if you're an employer and you learn these personality types, you know how to speak to the different people in your employ to motivate them to do what it is they need to be doing in their area. So what would motivate you? I mean, what would motivate you? What What do you need in, in the area of motivation? Boy, there'd be a lot of things. No. <laughs> uh, mostly is to tell me what you want. And time. Give me the time to do what you want. And let me get by myself, because I like to be by myself. That's another 
characteristic trait of a person uh, perfect melancholy is they're loners and, and let me be alone and do what I got to do. That's what motivates me. Yeah. And, and so when it comes to conflict, Brother Curtis is not going to be as outspoken as me. You talked about a target. Yeah. Somebody's got to call a pole a pole, carpet carpet. Mm -hmm. We can't be, we can't just, we can't talk around it. A strong yeah. leader needs to, I need to be more tempered, if you will. Strong leaders have to be more tempered, but they're going to be able to get in conflict and deal with conflict. I don't know about being better, but deal with conflict more than a person who's in the, who's in, who's behind the scenes. And, you know, uh, since we're doing this little game here with a sang one, uh, we're similar to like that. Tell me what you want. Tell me what you need. That's kind of how everybody is at first. You know, what do you need? What do you want? But then, you know, like he said, he's like, you give me the supplies, give me, give me the books, give me a calculator, give me an office. I only come talk to me when you need me. I'll take my own lunch. With me, we like having that, like, okay, so this is where you're going to be working. This is what you're going to be doing. We do need structure. Because with Sanguine's, what I've learned, because I have friends that are a lot like me. I respect you for being honest. We know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 I respect I'm, you for saying I'm that. I'm really talking to these people, sir. <laughs> okay. It, th these fine folks at home. Uh, the thing is, is I know people a lot like me, and, and our thing is, is if we don't have enough structure, well, then eventually it's going to be like, why even go to work at all? You know, so I got to do, I mean, we do got to have some ground rules, but we work best if you say, okay, this is your office, we'll come get you in four hours for lunch. That's terrible. It feels like jail. You can just be like, look, you have this area to work in, and then you have a key to this room, and then you have a key to this room, and then so work on this, and then when you get done with that, you know, and not so much give us a to-do list, but be like, these are your, it, it's almost like you have pawns. Yeah. Here's your pawns, okay? Yeah. Make sure this one's stocked and, 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 and mowed, and if it is, well, then go check on this one, and just, just kind of, you know, you give us some areas to, to upkeep, and we'll upkeep those areas, whereas I feel like more of the melancholy, and again, folks, it, it all person to person, but with a melancholy, I feel it's more like, give me the objective list, we're going to cross them off as, as we get yes. to them, but yeah. whereas with us, it's like, okay, give me, give me a bag of stuff that's already kind of put together, and I'll maintain it and make sure, and if it does start tearing up, I can fix it, and then, of course, you know, like in the ideal work situation, I have a melancholy I can, I can outsource to yeah. and be like, okay, look, yeah. now it's kind of yeah. in both of our lane. Yeah. He wouldn't necessarily love that, but. Yeah. No, it, for a melancholy, we can multitask, but our preference is to get on this project, and finish this project before you give me another project. Yeah, finish it. And, and let me just say that finishing is big. So I know we're running out of time, so I'm going to go ahead and, and, and shut us down. But before I pass the baton to you, I just want to say if the people listening to this right here would go study the four person personalities, find out what personality your kids have, your wife has, <coughs> your husband has, your boss has, your pastor has, your employer has, your employees have, you talking about save themselves a lot of preconceived ideas as well as heartburn because now you're understanding each other more and then teach your employees, your wife, your husband, your kids, the different personalities so that it doesn't look or seem as if things are disrespectful, but it, you can show them it's just who they are. It's not a crutch. It's not a crutch. It's just understanding who each other who each other really is and then we both gravitate in the middle and blessed be the balance i move toward you you move toward me not because that's who i am but but that's who we are we are a team husband and wife we are a team the church we are a team the team yeah we're, we're a team so you know we're not we're on our own thing we're we're together on this Absolutely. Well, look, folks, that's going to do it for another rousing edition of How Table Talk. Remember, guys, you can, all this information we told you about, there's tons of free stuff online. Just, I mean, you Google the personality types, and, and this isn't like, you know, something you got to be a scholar to, to find it and understand it. I mean, it's open information. He's right. It's, 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 um, both of them are right. It's like a, uh, it's like a cheat code for life sometimes. Now you kind of have like a, you have a map to go off of. 
Come by and see us sometime for a Sunday service. You can find us right here in Pineville, Louisiana, 2720. Who I, are we? That's howchurch.net, also known as Heart of Worship, whichever one you prefer. 2720 Highway 28 East in Pineville, Louisiana. You can find us Sunday services, 9 o'clock and 10.30 a.m. And if you decide to become a member and want to help serve, that's going to be your man right there. Brother Curtis does a lot of good work for us. He, uh, he gets all these great members in the church trained up so that uh, so that they're ready to serve. He educates them a lot on not only themselves but but their 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 walk with God. So, Brother Curtis, I've 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 kind of heard bits of of your classes going on, and that's that's some good stuff you got going on in there, sir. So, thank you for showing up and uh, doing another one with us. Uh, hopefully we'll see you in the near future. Uh, Pastor, always fun. Good to be with you there. Yes, sir. I had so much fun being with you. Oh, he <laughs> he, he enjoyed this one a little much I this did. week, <laughs> but it's all good. Folks, we'll see you next week. Until then, have a blessed rest of the week.